In order to think rightly about anything, one of the things I've actually learned, people say, oh, how do you deal with all these complicated issues and get to the heart of them? Well, you've got to find out what is the principle behind it, always. You've got to hone into the crux of the issue. What is the, the principle on which all the other stuff stands and falls? It's the best way to demolish an argument. Find out what it stands on, destroy it. I want to tell you a story. Tonight's talk is in the beginning, God. And the significance of that phrase comes out in the context of a story, of, of, an, ex, of an experience I had a little while ago. Um, I used to be a youth leader. We had a whole bunch of young people um, in this youth group. And we used to do Bible studies. We read through the whole New Testament slowly over the course of several years and studied it. Uh, and we used to have this kind of clubhouse uh, next to the church where the youth group was hosted. Uh, and after church, all these young people would come in. They were sort of between 13 and 16. Uh, and they'd come into the clubhouse and we'd make supper and we'd do activities and all this kind of stuff. But one of the things that started to happen was that these, uh, these kids used to bring along homework uh, because they realized, one of them asked me a few questions once about their homework and I helped and they thought, oh, this is all right. Uh, and so they came back the next week with a few more questions and then they started showing up with their assignments uh, and one thing kind of led to another and we had a bit of a tutoring session going on. And I thought to myself, well, maybe this is a real service. Maybe, uh, maybe we can do something here. Uh, and I said to them one time, we were all sitting around eating dinner, and I said, hey, you know, if I was to do more of this kind of tutoring stuff, are there any particular fields, any particular areas which you think I should really focus on, uh, where you think you really need some help? You know, let me know. And there was kind of this hushed silence, and I could see them all sitting there thinking and going, oh, yeah, uh, what do we say? And then one girl suddenly sits up in her seat as if she's had this revelation, and she goes, I know. She said, can you teach us how to think? And I thought, and then the whole room went, yeah. <laughs> yeah, teach us how to think. That was not the answer I was expecting. <laughs> I was expecting English, maths, you know, something like this. And I was kind of flummoxed by it. I thought, teach us how to think. Like, what am I supposed to make of that? Um, <laughs> how am I supposed to answer that question? How do you do lessons on how to think? Um, but you know, I've subsequently reflected on that question, teach us how to think. And I think it does have an answer. Um, and tonight we're going to begin to answer the question. And in order to answer the question, in order to think rightly about anything, one of the things I've actually learned, people say, oh, how do you deal with all these complicated issues and get to the heart of them? Well, you've got to find out what is the principle behind it, always. You've got to hone into the crux of the issue. What is the, the principle on which all the other stuff stands and falls? It's the best way to demolish an argument. Find out what it stands on, destroy it, and the whole argument will fall down. Because there will be some proposition, there will be some thing from which everything else is built out. Uh, and in order to find that thing, you really need to go to the beginning of the thing. And we can go to the beginning of everything, right? And in fact, the beginning of everything is in the title of tonight's talk. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. What does the song say? Let's start at the very beginning, a very good place to start. Um, do we know that? Is that? Yeah, cool. Now, I grew up with sisters, all right? We had to watch all that stuff. Um, it teaches us a few things, this statement. First, it teaches us that there was a beginning, okay? That's important. I think now pretty much all scientists agree that there was some kind of beginning. Secondly, it teaches us that in the beginning, something was already there. God was there in the beginning, right? Um, and it's interesting, there has been some scientific inquiry about what was there at the beginning, you know, quote unquote beginning, in a scientific sense. Uh, but finally, thirdly, in the beginning, it was God who caused the beginning. He initiated it. He ignited it. He made it happen. The reason this is important is because it is a statement about all things. All reality. All existence. All being. This is the truth about everything. That God began it. God is the creator. And whatever the thing, or whatever the matter, 
in question, it is God who lies at the start of it. He gave all things their place, he gave all things their meaning, he gave all things their purpose. Do you know that's actually quite a countercultural thing to say already? Uh, because we do believe that we give things their purpose, including ourselves, that things have meaning insofar as they mean something for us, right? Uh, now, all of a sudden, when you open the Bible and you read the first line, which is the necessary conclusion of the existence of God, full stop, uh, it's not just the Bible saying it, it's the necessary conclusion of God's existence, you're confronted with something quite different. All of a sudden, it doesn't begin with us. Uh, it all began with God. He gave gave everything its place, its meaning. He infused it with purpose. Therefore, a person cannot think rightly, <coughs> pardon me, about anything at all unless they think from this foundation. About anything at all. Um, and I don't just mean things like chairs or trees, or, but I mean the whole stuff and substance of life and living and the world. You've got to begin outside of yourself. Let me tell you a funny story. John Lennox tells this story. Uh, there is some, I should have researched this before I got up here, but there is some kind of uh, lecture at Oxford University where all the heads of the various faculties and whatnot come in and there is an annual lecture. It's, a, it's an event on the calendar. Uh, and John Lennox, Professor John Lennox, for those of you who know him, had to do that lecture one year. And he tells us, told a story. He said, suppose I was to come in here with all of you most learned minds, you know, in the, in the world, and I was to come in here with a chocolate cake. And I was to say to you, this is Auntie Joan's chocolate cake. And I put it down in front of the group. And I say to you, listen, I'd like to know something about Auntie Joan's chocolate cake, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. What I want you to do instead is to all go away from here and you can all have access to the cake whenever you need it, for as long as you need it. And when every single one of you has done all of the respective analysis, all of the respective inquiry and scientific work and sociological work and historical work and mathematical work and whatever you can do in relation to this cake, you do. I want to know what field the cocoa beans were grown in, in Peru, before they got into this cake. You can tell me. You can tell me the mathematical properties, the geometry of the cake, right down to its very atomic structure. You can tell me everything there is to know about this cake. Go and do all of your work. Come back when you're ready, and I will ask you my question. And I will seek the answer. Very well, you all go away, you do all of the work. Sometime later, we think we're ready. We think we can take any question on this cake. And you all gather together. And he says, and then you come together in this room and I ask you a question. And I say to you, ladies and gentlemen of Oxford, could you please tell me, why did my Auntie Joan make that cake? They actually can't answer the question. And you know something, the only way they could answer that question is if they were to actually go and find Auntie Joan and ask her why she made the cake. Now this question of why is important, in, it's a question you can ask about a chocolate cake, right? And it has a certain meaning in a certain place. But you understand the thought that actually that question becomes infinitely more important and infinitely more meaningful and infinitely more consequential the more complex the thing is. And how consequential is it in relation to ourselves? Why did God make a human being? Why did God do this? Why did God do that? There are questions you cannot answer. There's revelation you cannot have on a subject. In fact, they are extremely foundational and consequential revelations and consequential questions that you will never know, apart from the fact that you might be able to go, well, in the beginning, God, and go back to Him and find out your answer from that point.